us from London is author Hannah Ali, who is actually one of the first and few authors around the world who are Somali, who are actually writing their books first in the Somali language and having it translated back to English, which is very interesting. Hannah Ali joins us all the way from London. Welcome to Integration TV. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Tell us about your new book. Right, so my new book is a collection of short stories that was published by Market 54. It's called The Story of Us in English, uh, which translates as Sheikh Ali Narashayada in Somali. And it's a collection of stories that were originally written in English, but I had the wonderful opportunity to be part of the translation process and actually had them uh, be translated into Somali, both written and through audio. But what's interesting is that you actually had it released first in the Somali language. Tell us about that decision. Absolutely. I think that it was a wonderful um, opportunity that I was given by Market 54, who are this wonderful, wonderful publishing agent um, that are really sort of promoting the idea that African stories should be written in African languages. And so when I had the opportunity of having it uh, translated into Somali, it was just this sort of mind-blowing um, opportunity really that I'd never considered before and I thought to myself gosh why had, why had you never considered that before you know the idea that you can write something in English and then have it be read in Somali I think is just amazing well, what I love about you is actually your journey here you are a PhD candidate and you are basically using your creative talent to give back to your society tell me about that Yes, absolutely. I mean, I think that, you know, Somali is my uh, native tongue. It's my first language. It's the first language that I learned to speak first. And for quite a while, certainly in the first um, five to six years of my life, it was my uh, only language. And so I think as you grow up, and especially when you're part of the diaspora and, you know, as Somalis, um, you know, having gone through the majority of us forced migration and, and, and living really in all corners of the world, um, as we learn different languages, sometimes you find that your Somali sort of competes with those languages and perhaps lags behind. And so this idea that I could have my stories presented uh, in the Somali language was a fantastic opportunity. And the um, sort of big thing that I got out of it was the conversations that I had with the second generation in my community. Um, and the fact that they felt as though my stories really made them think about the fact that, hey, you know, how good is my Somali? Um, and it, the, the idea that it made them question their own sense of Somali language. And perhaps I think sometimes that can be a very uncomfortable question that you have to ask yourself because so much of our community and indeed our Somali identity is linked around the Somali language. This idea that, you know, that's how you communicate with your parents. That's certainly how your parents communicate with you, whether you, you know, understand them or not, you know, um, it's a big part of our culture. So to have this opportunity of bringing um, Somali language to the second and often third uh, generation here, I think is, is, is a great chance. Oh no, it's brilliant. I think that it's going to open a whole world for a lot of young people who actually have not been even exposed to the language. Yes. So yes. kudos to you for starting that. Now tell me about the stories in this collection because I know they centered about the, uh, on the experience of young women in the diaspora. Tell me more about that. Yes, so I have four stories. Um, they're called The Story of Us, Bloated, A Kind of Love, and Charmarke. And they all deal with four different women and the experiences that they have in the West. They're all sort of centered around the fact that they um, have all dealt with displacement or um, sort of trying to come to terms with their identity in one way or another. And then from those sort of um, foundation feelings, we then look at how their life transpires and, and, and sort of what happens to them. And the idea behind that really is what becomes of you as an adult when so much of your foundation of your identity and who you are is questioned from a very young age. Now, when you're speaking of identity, I know there's a lot of young people on Twitter who are constantly tweeting about different identities, what it means to be Somali. But I just happen to think, is it okay just to say that we are Somali? Absolutely. I mean, what seems to be hot at the moment, certainly in the fact that I get invited to a lot of panels, 
um, is this idea of Somali Nimo, so Somali Ness, for those of you um, uh, who don't speak Somali. So this idea of Somali Ness, you know, what does it mean to be Somali? Um, which again also is linked to questions of identity crisis, um, which I've also dealt with in a lot of panels. And it's really sort of interesting because you've got two opposite sides here. You've got the older generation um, being, you know, our parents and those of, um, who are who've been here a lot longer. Here, I mean, the the diaspora, of the West, and they sort of look down and think, well, I don't have an identity crisis. I know exactly who I am. You know, I'm Somali. I've got the whatever nationality. I, I don't have time to think about my identity. I'm I'm too busy living life, raising kids, trying to get money, whatever. Then you've got the second generation, you know, this sort of coming of age students, um, young academics who are very, very interested in this question of who am I? And I think that's really um, an indication of, 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 of this idea that people really want to connect to something. People really want to put their finger on something and say, this is true. Um, I know this to be true. This is who I am. This is who I want to be. This is authentic. And, you know, it's it's really interesting to see what people are interested in. And of course, this idea of identity is something that I write about a lot um, in my stories. So for me, I think being Somali is a lived experience. So whatever you live as, you know, the way that you live your life, your culture, your, your, your identity, if you consider yourself a Somali, then ultimately you are and nobody can tell you any different. Absolutely. And I think what you said earlier was that the Somali identity is fluid. I mean, there's so many millions of young people that are growing up outside the country now. And, yeah. you know, who, who, who identifies like what is what is a Somali? Absolutely. I mean, a Somali, you know, again and again, I, I, I always stress to people that I can't answer that for somebody in the same way that I can't tell you who you are. So essentially, being Somali is who you are. Now, it's up to you if you choose to make that the center of your identity, if you choose to make that something that really does not matter at all to you. That's a very personal thing. But I think, you know, your sense of who you are is, is again and again going to be your lived experience. So it's what you choose to uphold, the traditions that matter to you, the language that you speak, um, the culture that you that you value. And the connection that you have, you know, often with your parents and your siblings, I think sort of ground you in that sense of, of, of a Somali bubble. You know, this idea that when you're in your parents' house, you very much feel as though you are um, in Somalia in the sense that you're, you know, you're in this sort of bubble of, of, speak, of hearing Somali language, whether it's Somali music, you know, you're seeing the Somali dress, you're eating Somali food, and it feels very safe, I think. Um, and for others, you know, they, they carry that on in, in, in their own house and their own families as they grow up as well. Yeah, and I think it's interesting with your stories to explore the experience of people outside of the country and to share that experience with people inside the country. Because I think for a long time we were these strangers to people back home. Yeah. <laughs> so for now, I think we're starting to, with the social media, connect these communities of young people around the world who have different points of view from their life experience. So with your stories, what do you hope to convey? Well, what I'm hoping to convey really is that the Somali story and certainly the Somali um, diaspora story, the Somali refugee story, forced migration story is one that's very, very complex and multi-layered. And all I can do is just show four examples of what can happen. That's all I can sort of really promise. Um, but also for the Somali readers back home in the region, I really hope that they look at this as a way for them to be able to enjoy fiction, but fiction in a way that sort of speaks to them. You know, I think for, 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 for those of us who grew up in the West and, you know, sort of um, grew up listening and, and, and enjoying um, Western um, fairy tales and coming of age stories, you know, those stories were so powerful to us because on some level, despite the fact that they were fairy tales, you know, they were fictional, they spoke to our lives and they spoke to the culture that we saw around us in the West. So what I'm trying to do really is say, I'm presenting you with fictional stories, but they're also sort of rooted in some 
sort of way, looking at Somali values and culture and tradition, if only um, by questioning it, by turning it around, by saying, you know, what does it mean to be a good Somali? I think it's something that I'm, I'm, I'm really interested in. Interesting. Anything that comes with the word good, I always worry yeah, about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, and I say good, you know, with the inverted commas, um, because it's, it's, I, I, that's a word that I really sort of want to unpack this idea of, of what does it mean not only to be a good Somali, but also what does it mean to be a good woman? You know, those are things that I find really, really interesting in my writings. And so I hope that people will be able to read it in a way that's a bit different, because I think some of those questions about what it means to be a good woman, what, is it, what, is, what does it mean to be a good a Somali, those are things that are often unpacked in the English language. So to have the opportunity of, of unraveling very complicated questions in the Somali language about Somali people, I think is a bit of a unique opportunity that I, that I hope that people will enjoy. Absolutely. And you're doing trailblazing work and uh, want to know what's next for you. I know that you have some exciting news to share with us. So tell us what's happening with your book. Absolutely. Yes, by popular demand, the collection of short stories will now be released in English uh, in 2018. I'm really excited about that. That's going to be done by Market 54. Don't forget that you can buy the stories at market54.com. Um, so what we'll be doing is presenting the stories in their original format. Um, whilst also really valuing the Somali um, version and sort of giving you the opportunity to, um, you know, have either or or both. And I think it'll be really interesting um, to have um, both the original and the translated version side by side for, the, for those who, who choose to do that. Great. And what I love too is the audio books. Tell us about that. Yeah, I mean, that's a fantastic uh, chance for sure. We had a wonderful voice actress who recorded the shows, um, sorry, the stories. Um, and it does feel like a show. That's probably why I said it, because, you know, you're listening to it and it's very dramatic and she's... Um, well, what I love is the fact that you use such descriptive words and it really makes you feel like you're in there with the subject. It's beautiful. Yes, thank you. Yes, I mean, I that probably comes from my poetic background. So I started as a poet and so there's a lot of obsession there, I think, about word play and meaning and sort of going back on words and you know um the different layers and meanings that, that a single word can have but the audio version is fantastic i mean basically it gives you the opportunity for for people who live here certainly as an example you know to walk around the streets of london listening to an audio book in your ears in somali i think it's just it's wonderful and those of us i think also who perhaps feel a bit disconnected to the Somali language, especially if your parents or your relatives live very far from you and you perhaps don't really have the opportunity of hearing the Somali language as often as you'd like, I think it's, it's a great opportunity to be able to have those stories that you can sort of listen to at night, you can listen to in your car and really sort of feel connected to the Somali community in a way. I love it. Well, thank you so much for joining us all the way from London and good luck with your great stories and keep them coming. We need more in Somali society. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're watching Integration TV on Somali national television. We've been speaking with author Hannah Ali, The Story of Us. This is Integration.